This project was begun three years ago as part of a heritage lottery funded project around the village of Nunburnham. Our aim is to excavate and survey a large hilltop settlement um, not far from the village to look at its history and development through time. Uh, James Lyle has done a very large geophysical survey and our aim was to pinpoint interesting parts of this survey with the aim of working out how old the settlement is and how it develops through time. Uh, one of the main reasons that we do geophysical survey on these sites is that it's a non-destructive method of prospection. So it gives us the best possible picture of what's under there without us having to actually dig it. Because every time we do dig these features, we are in effect destroying them. No one else can come after us and do it again. So to get the best possible picture before we start allows us to, if you like, put keyhole surgery in there so we know exactly where we want a trench to answer the most important questions. So before we started excavation we wanted to find out as much as we could about the site so we started off by looking at aerial photographs which uh, produced some crop marks and then we decided we would put some targeted geophysics in. Uh, we were very happy with the results as it discovered many new features and many new things about this hilltop settlement. The geophysics was carried out over a number of seasons, uh, mostly in winter, very cold up there, windswept, but uh, it did give me an insight into how the site might have been used in that it, no one in their right minds would be living up there all the time. So it, it sort of focused us into thinking, well, what were they doing up there? And so we decided we'd put some trenches in to try and answer those questions. In the 2015 season, we're able to open a number of trenches over key targets. Our aim this year was to look at the ritual part of this hilltop settlement. We succeeded in excavating a human burial, uh, a young adult male with pretty good teeth, buried with a pig, which fits nicely into the Aris culture of East Yorkshire. Last year we found an elderly male also buried with a portion of the pig and it's possible that these two are related. So we have a large hilltop cemetery for the Aris culture. That wasn't the first ritual element on that hill site because we've also got what could be a large Bronze Age round barrow or perhaps a hengy form structure Whatever it is of those two, it's likely to be of Bronze Age date. That was cut through by three linear earthworks, which are quite unusual features on that hilltop site, but one of the common things within the Eastern Yorkshire archaeology of the Late Bronze Age and Iron Age periods. And it would almost appear as though it's a deliberate attempt to delete this circular feature from the landscape by cutting trenches through it. It seems to have been replaced, although we're not definite at this stage about it yet, by a large square enclosure nearby. Within the enclosure were the remains of uh, humans, uh, which were disarticulated, and the burial was very disturbed, so as yet we can't tell very much about the individuals or individual represented there. The other thing we looked at was the relationship between these features and the crop marks and geophysics and the most uh, easterly of the trenches was what could be a Neolithic mortuary enclosure. We're not sure about this but certainly there are rock cut features right into the chalk at the bottom of the stitch, we got worked pieces of flint, which may give us a clue as to dating. One interesting aspect of the 2015 season was how many of the features had very small pieces of Roman pottery associated with them, which does show some Roman activity and may give us some clue as to the missing Roman road that should run across our site. This year confirmed the importance of working with local communities. After all, it's their heritage and they are the best protectors of it. 
We had great cooperation from farmers, landowners, the people from the village of all ages, from toddlers under parental guidance, of course, to the elderly who are able to come along and participate to get on the hands and knees with the trowel and unearth the history of their community. It so happens that they're finding important archaeology. If you go into the fields today, it's flat, featureless farmland, albeit surrounded by nice countryside, but underneath the soil lies a rich heritage. That's right, Peter, and I think the highlight of the whole excavation for me was watching one of our younger members uh, take up a broken mace head, which was uh, very exciting for all concerned. Yeah, the mace head was one of our major finds, and the decision was taken that a member of the local East Riding community and our youngest digger, or almost youngest digger, mm. ought to be allowed to excavate it and hopefully get them hooked on archaeology.